You're Australia's first Commonwealth heavyweight champion since Peter Jackson in 1892. It's a huge, uh, huge achievement. Um, congratulations on your recent achievements as well. Thank um, you very much. Receiving the, the Nigel Men Award for 2014. So you were in Vegas earlier this year, the end of last year, yep. for the World Boxing uh, Council Convention. Uh, tell me about that. You know, how was the experience there? It was awesome. I, I hadn't been to the USA at all, yeah. so for me that was a very big eye opener. Um, obviously going to Vegas, where you know, the, the city of never sleep and all that sort of stuff. Um, Ricky Hatton, my promoter, uh, took me over, which was great, so I hung out with him there. Uh, also Jeff was there for his uh, award as well, so we made a nice little group together. Um, it was just very humbling to be in the same room with all these stars, whether they're former or, or um, current. So yeah, people like Mayweather and there in Hollyfield and Delahoya, they're all sort of standing there. And, and I was in one particular section of the room where the champions had to sit. And they called out the particular names of all the champions and I was called out as well because I've got a WBC title as one of the lower level ones. Um, and to be called out with those people, in the, with those, those names sort of thing, was, it's very humbling obviously, but it's, it's something you, you sort of, you can get used to, you know what I mean? So, for me, um, it was good. I was there for three days. They had all their all their sort of behind the scenes stuff that the WBC do with sanctioning and all that sort of stuff. But um, to basically be in, in the hotel with these all these guys for three days was absolutely good. Um, I saw a photo. Um, you took the Ron Jeremy. Yes, <laughs> that was actually on the way there. The yeah. first the first photo I taken was with Ron Jeremy. So we're sitting there at the uh, LAX to be honest, and um, we said, "Do you want to take a photo?" We just had a chat. Um, Obviously, a very nice guy. Actually, looked and smelled like he was a homeless bum, to be honest. <laughs> but um, but an absolute gentleman and, and champion. But yeah, we all know what he's, he's obviously famous for. And it was it was good to sort of get him as my first man. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell me what it's like to be trained by Jeff Fedick, who uh, we all know he's one of the world's best featherweight champions. He's also trained Mike Tyson. So he doesn't like being uh, under his, his wing. It's it's one of those things I've never really. Um, Especially the time I was over in Perth and Neil, so I didn't really have a trainer, so to speak. I had a few people that were sort of doing pads for me and things like that, but it got to the point where I didn't think I was learning anything off them. Um, hence the reason I'm back here now in Sydney, and Jeff reached out to me, so we've, we've had a little dinner and had a discussion, and I'm training underneath him now, which is great. Um, it's one of those things where I, I really do look at him and I, I do listen. I know he's got a lot of a lot of information to give and a lot of uh, knowledge to sort of uh, unload on me, so. I do actually listen to everything he says, even though he talks 100 miles an hour and never shuts up. But I, I listen to everything he says, and it, and it has actually helped a lot in, um, in my boxing. I, I need to learn all the little basics that I didn't learn through amateurs, etc., like that. So I've got the power, I've got the skill over the else. As long as I've got the fitness, obviously. So Jeff's just fine tuning all those little and tweaking all those little things I need to get tweaked. So um, at this point, it's, it's a match made in heaven, and it's really come up well. It's awesome. Lucas, you, you grew up in Granville. Mm -hmm. uh, what sports were you into competitively back, back in your youth? And uh, who were some of your, your sporting idols or influences uh, growing up? Basically, um, yeah, Granville was a, a lovely place to grow up. Um, most of my friends were the Lebanese or Islander. Yeah. Um, so I was the, the white boy out sort of thing. But um, right next to where I lived, um, across the creek, was uh, baseball. baseball okay. So I think one of the first the two first sports I've ever played in my life were um, athletics yep. and baseball. So I went to state for high jump in athletics and I was a state pitcher for baseball. So okay. I think that's where I get my right hand from in terms of bringing it through and everything else. I uh, played basketball for school and um, made yeah, Parramatta Wildcats for, for, for that. Um, also played obviously soccer and, and football for school. Yep. But, um, uh, also played for Parramatta Juniors, so okay. the, the actual Eels, yeah. but, but Juniors, so I played with like High Marsh and Kayla and right. sort of stuff, so I've always been around sport, always loved doing some sort of sport. And there was a certain point where I either got too big or just too violent for it and then sort of move on to something else. There was a, a big gap between, say, 17 and 18 till I was about 28, so it was a good yeah, 10 years where I didn't actually do any sport at all, but I was just hard working. At the moment, who would be like a some of your influences right now, like the influences that you had when you were younger, do they yeah. continue to? You know, one, one person I've always looked at just as a general sportsman and, and person outside the sport was Michael Jordan. Okay. Um, I think just the way that obviously he, he performed every night and he, yeah. he did what he did. Um, but the way he conducted himself in and out of, of the court, I was going to say the ring, but yeah, on and off the court. Yeah. Um, he was always a gentleman, he was always um, yeah, very well presented and 
he never got caught up in all the tabloid yeah. crap. You know, he was never sort of a bad boy, so to speak, and everything else. So that was someone who I definitely looked at as someone to aspire to. Um, in terms of a boxing side of things, definitely Mike Tyson. He was 100% the man. And uh, it's just unfortunate that outside the ring, he wasn't as sort of controllable yeah. as he was inside the ring. You know, inside the ring, he's an absolute machine and, and beast, and, and that's exactly what I want to sort of come come across as. But outside the ring, I want to be someone who, who is approachable and is a, a nice guy. Yeah. I just wanted to ask as well, because uh, you did a um, bit of cage fighting before you got into boxing. Uh, how does the, the training in cage fighting differ, from, differ in terms of uh, the mental preparation, the diet, and the levels and intensity of training? Um, in terms of like the, the, the diet, the intensity, all that sort of stuff, it's, it's pretty much identical. It, it is sort of the same thing. Um, the training is obviously different. Uh, I, I found it quite easy to, to transition between MMA and back into boxing. Because regardless of anything else, uh, MMA, it starts standing up. So you start generally in a, in a boxing stance or a kickboxing stance, so to speak, and, and you have to learn how to box to do MMA regardless. So for me, I never really thought of kicking. Um, I never really thought of taking anyone down. It wasn't my sort of repertoire. I just wanted to sort of punch people in the face and that was all I wanted to do. So when I did come up against someone like um, Daniel Cormier, who was a, a pure wrestler, yeah. He just dominated me on the ground and I was stuck and uh, it was a real sort of wake up call for me to know that yeah, boxing is my sort of yeah. thing in my path. Uh, I think I was a little bit too late to start to try and learn something. Like I was 30 years old when I started fighting, when I jumped in the cage. Um, so for me at 30 years old to start learning uh, wrestling wasn't yeah. sort of really something I wanted to do. Right. So I just stick with boxing and stick with what I was good at. Going back to when you won your, your first fight at the, at the Manning Leagues Club, mm -hmm. Uh, what were the like the kind of emotions that ran through you that day, like after winning, and um, and did you always have a gut feeling that you know you, you travel this far, you get to the point that you are at today? To be honest, um, it was actually a really weird month for me that that particular month because I had my first cage fight um, the week after I had my first kickboxing fight, yeah. and two weeks after that I had my first pro boxing okay. fight. So for the that first month, it was like it's just a, a whirlwind yeah. of everything, you know. Um, I honestly went into fighting in general just to get a belt of some sort. I wanted one in MMA, one in kickboxing, one in boxing, but just a belt. I didn't care what it was, just just a belt. I had no, not not the intentions. I obviously, wanted to be the best I could be, but I had no inclination that I was going to be any sort of world champion of any sort or anything like that at all. Um, so I did get an MMA belt. I got the um, ex MMA Oceano chair, which was great. Kickboxing just well, I had the one fight and I thought no, that was it. I just spent two weeks resting my leg and couldn't walk and everything else. So um, I, I never fathomed that I would come as far as I have in, in boxing. So I've risen to the top quite quickly and, and through the, the world ranks. So I'm, I'm quite happy where I'm at, don't get me wrong. But um, it wasn't something that I sort of saw myself getting to at that stage. Yeah. No.